Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a custom cursor in Webflow. These are completely customizable and they're super easy to set up on your website. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is the project that I'm going to be adding a custom cursor to. Just a simple hero section I threw together for this tutorial. I think it'll look good with a custom cursor. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a wrapper for our cursor. So I'm going to hit Command K and grab a div block. And we're going to give this a class name of cursor wrapper. So this is where our cursor is going to sit inside of inside of the navigator. I'm just going to drop this right below the body. So it's on top. First, let's go ahead and set this to a position of fixed. And I'm going to set that to full by this icon right here. Before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and grab the Z index and set that to 1000. Our cursor is going to be inside of this wrapper. So we're going to go ahead and change the display to flex and we'll leave it at horizontal. And then we're going to align that center and justify it center as well. So let's add our cursor class. So command K and I'm going to grab a div block. So we have our div block inside of cursor wrapper. We'll give this a name of cursor. So this is where you can get creative and customize your cursor to make it exactly the way you want it. I would recommend following along. I'm going to make a normal circle cursor and then you can tweak it afterward. So again, it's whatever you'd like to style it as for now, I'm going to set mine to 20 pixels in the width and 20 pixels in the height. And just so we can see it for now, we'll give this a nice blue color. And I'm going to set the radius to 100% to give us a nice round circle. So you can see we have a dot in the center of our screen. Let's go ahead and add an interaction to make this function. All right, so I'm just going to go over here to the interactions tab and under page trigger, I'm going to select the plus icon and we're going to go for mouse move in viewport. So we're going to select an action and we're going to play mouse animation. So under our animation, let's go ahead and add a new animation. And for the mouse X animation, let's select our cursor and select the plus and we're going to go with move. And so now we have two states, one at 0% and one at 100%. So the first thing we need to do is go to the effect and we want to select the class itself. So if we add this to multiple pages, we want to make sure it's affecting that class. So we have cursor at 0%. We want to go into the X value for the mouse X actions. And we want to go negative 50 viewport width. So VW. So that's going to push the cursor way over here to the edge of the browser. So since we're on the X axis, we're dealing with the viewport width. And when we switch to the Y in a minute, we'll be dealing with the viewport height. So we have the 0% set. So let's go set the 100% and we'll set this on the X to 50 viewport width. So now you can see it's pushed over here to the edge. Let's set up the same thing in the mouse Y. So make sure in our navigator, we have our cursor selected. Select the plus and we'll go for a move transform for the zero. Now in the Y, we'll set this to negative 50 VH and for 100, 50 VH. And again, we want to make sure that we have the class selected for both of these. And if we hit the live preview toggle, now when we move our cursor around, you can see that we have that blue dot following along throughout the viewport. One thing you want to take in mind is the cursor is kind of lagging behind my mouse. That's the desired effect that I want. But if you want the cursor to be right aligned with the mouse, just save this and go to your smoothing and turn that down to zero. Uh, so you can play around with that to make sure it snaps to your mouse a little bit better. I'm going to go for about 75. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go with 75% on my smoothing. One important thing that you guys want to add is a custom line of code to make sure that this cursor wrapper we have on top of everything is not going to clash with the website. So you may have some issues somewhere on your page where you can't click or hover through it. So we want to make sure we add this piece of code. That way it works properly. So hit command K and just grab an embed element. And in here, I'm going to open and close the style tag and we want to grab that cursor wrapper. So we do that by just saying, dot cursor dash wrapper. So that is how you grab the class. You just add the little dot since it is a class and not an ID. And then we want to say open and close curly brackets. And inside of those, we're going to grab the pointer events. So pointer dash events. And then we're going to say none. 
All right, so we have the pointer event set to none for the cursor wrapper, and we can save and close that. And I just put this inside of the cursor wrapper. You can put this anywhere on the page. Any page that you use your cursor on, you wanna make sure you have that embed element there as well. So this is a good way just to make sure it's all together. All right, so now we need to set up some hover states so that when we're hovering over links, we can actually see some interaction there. Uh, so simply select whatever element you want your hover effect to be applied to. I'm gonna hover over this large heading first and then go into the interactions tab and then we're gonna select mouse hover and we're gonna start an animation and I'm just gonna add a new one here and we'll just call this mouse hover. We're gonna reuse these on everything. Uh, so just call it something generic there. And then I'm gonna select the cursor itself and we're going to apply whatever we want to this. I'm gonna adjust the scale. Maybe we go up to two in the X and Y. Let's add a little bit of easing. And let's also do the opacity. We wanna make sure these are at the same time, so we'll group those together. And I'm gonna lower the opacity down to 80%. And I'm gonna make sure the easing is the same so it happens at the same exact time. And I'll just save that. So that's what happens when our mouse hovers, that animation starts. And then when we hover out, I'm gonna duplicate that and then rename it, mouse hover out. We'll select that. And then now we'll just change these values back to default. So here we'll set this back to a scale of one and the opacity back to 100%. So we save that, we go here, we can take a look at our custom cursor when we hover over there goes to 80% opacity and scales up. And if we simply want to add this to any other link, uh, if we want to do the same interaction, we can just grab this work link, quickly add a mouse hover, and then it's just a few clicks to grab those animations. And then we have the same effect. Boom. Lastly, if you just want to see the blue dot and you don't want to have your Mac or PC default cursor there, all you have to do is go to your navigator, select your body, and then grab the body all pages. And then under cursor, you can just set that to none. And for your links, you wanna grab all links, and then you wanna go down and set that to none. And so now we have this nice custom cursor and we can't see our default Mac or PC cursor whatsoever. And so that is how you can set up some custom cursors in Webflow. I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial and found it helpful. If you did, Make sure to leave this video a like, subscribe for more design and Webflow related content. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.